Center. They say thieves are targeting cars in the parking lot of Largo Plaza. News Force Derek Ward talked with these store owners who say these alleged crimes are driving away their business. The vast parking lot of Largo Plaza, it's always busy. They have security all over the place. You'd think it would be the last place you'd have to worry about getting your car broken into. In the daytime, it's like, it's, for some reason now, it's, it's bad. We got to keep our name, the head on the swivel as we work. Aldo Williams will still give you a fresh cut. He's found out vigilance pays off for he and his customers. People breaking the cars here, people breaking the cars here. There's no police hey. presence at all. The Tell you doors, again. another stylist, another victim. Andrea Butler, for her, the ordeal began with an unexpected question from a colleague. One of my colleagues coming down to the room and uh, said, do you have somebody in your car? You that walk in your car? It's like, no, no, I didn't. Keys right here. He said, well, I think you need to come on outside and see what's going on. This is what's been going on here far too often. A few hours later, there was yet another break in in the same lot. Vehicle owners returning to their cars and finding smashed windows and broken glass. Young has come out with, with the mask on. From Pestmark, jumped to somebody's car, broke into his car. That's been 30 seconds and they're gone. The thieves don't go unnoticed. In fact, the police have been called. Williams watched a response once after the thieves had struck. They right up there. And they go up there and chase them, they get away. I asked the officer later, I said, uh, what happened? He said, well, they hit Central Avenue and got away, but they also hit four, four cars at the same time. People living in the neighborhood surrounding the shopping center say they've had the same issue with cars broken into on their streets. And it wasn't long ago that the Phoenix was the scene of another crime. One of the ones that's on the rise in the county, someone drove a truck through a back wall. And got an ATM that had nothing in it. Meanwhile, the, penis, the stylists find themselves offering their customers advice along with the cuts. Even if you have to walk a little distance, right? This park is somewhere where there's more traffic, more walking traffic. We definitely need more patrols, um, need more officers. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> but, but you... Let them grab them kids. They will be the first one. Yeah, the first ones. The first one. <laughs> she will be the first one. Tell my man, I fucked up out of here in the two babies, man. Man, that shit ain't right, man. Man, shit, man. Man, they, they, they don't do that over in Potomac. But Potomac, the kids in Potomac don't got to deal with that type of shit. They got a suite over there, man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The high end boutique in South Jersey open for business, but its exterior would say otherwise. Caroline's Luxuries in Hattonfield is boarded up this after a quick smash and grab break in. And tonight, investigators saying they need your help to identify the suspects who were caught on camera. Action News reporter Liam Pender live for us outside the boutique. Uh, I think we should already <laughs> pretty much identify the suspects. Do you think these guys feel bad? Like, just it's like every time they see someone's son, man, they they don't feel guilty. Like, they're like, ah, shit, these guys are recording, they look like me. Listen, in the pre production room, they're outnumbered. Now, on the on screen talent is overwhelmingly son, Ah. in the pre production room, where you're talking about producers, um, writers. Um, lighting people, uh, you know what I'm saying? All the people, tech people that 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 make the show happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, in the pre-production meeting, it's probably the only sons in there is probably on-air talent, right? So, yeah, these guys are minorities in this building. So when they do the pre-production meeting and they decide what stories they're going to cover that night, because remember, there's thousands of sun crimes in these cities, a city like Philadelphia in a day, or let's just say hundreds, you know what I'm saying? And so they can't cover everything. They have to figure out which ones they're going to cover. And in that meeting, you would think with all these white beady eyes staring at them and they're going over all this and all right, well, Pooktavius, we can't cover that because that, you know, we got 17 shootings 11 non-contact and six where there was a victim. Uh, that one right there, that person only got shot in the ankle. We got two where there were three and one was a college kid. So oh, that's a good story. All right, we'll cover that one. And they're picking through a sea of black crime 
And these niggas still don't feel no shame in that. Still don't have the 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 uh humanness or the normalness to be ashamed and be like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, the contract. That's the difference. <laughs> They still will in there talk about racism in the newsroom. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course they will. These sons will talk, but let one of these sons get pulled over on their way to the fucking, or let somebody ask one of them, like, uh, uh, do you work here? Or, 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 or you know what I'm saying? Or let some, let some little microaggression happen to one of these sons. Yep, you know, that's that one. You'll never hear the end of it. That'll be the story for like 10 years. So sons of, we know how to manipulate you guys. We know how to flip the script on you guys to where like, and then y'all can't bring it to attention. You can't just, if you want say you a white guy, you're a producer and you just sitting there at the, you go, you, you, you go to the coffee, you're in the break room and shit. We're getting some coffee and shit. And this guy's getting some coffee next to you. I'm just making small talk. And you're like, Tyrone, oh my God, I've always wanted to ask one of you guys this. One of you guys? Damn. He gonna go online and be like, today, one of my producers called me one of you guys. And then everybody gonna be like, the comment section have a thousand people, 600 likes, 1,500 shares. It's gonna be like racism in the newsroom. It's be like, see, this always happened. This is what we gotta deal with. And he didn't even get the question out. Leland. Yeah, great. This happened right across the street from the borough municipal building, which also houses the police department. And take a look. This actually happened a few months ago. And after that break in, the owner installed this metal door with bars and also some very thick layered glass in her front window. But the thieves broke through that early Thursday morning. And now she says she plans to beef up security even more. I could not believe that it's happened again to me. Surveillance video shows burglars break through the front window of Caroline's Luxuries early Thursday around 1.30 a.m. Once inside, a man appears to use a sledgehammer to smash glass cases and steal thousands in luxury goods. Belts and jewelry were taken, but it was mostly high-end handbags that were targeted. Brands like Chanel and Hermes. Owner Carolina Yosef still tallying up the loss. But we're still ca counting the damages. We're currently at about 70 items taken. This video shows the Look group. at her eyes. Yo, she look. That insurance claim didn't come back like she wanted it to. <laughs> they were like, ah, nah, your zip code, we uh, we, uh 70 items, hey, we can in, we can reimburse you for about 14 of those. <laughs> yeah, no, she, she got fucked up. She got fucked up pretty bad. 70 she items taken. This video shows the group. Yeah, she poor lady. she's gonna she's gonna realize once it happens after she beefs it up even again that ultimately she's gonna have to get the fuck out of there. She's gonna have to leave. <coughs> wow. Son. 70 items taken. This video shows the group loading up a small silver SUV and speeding away. All of this happening in about four minutes. It's just the latest incident in Haddonfield causing residents alarm. People are a little bit more on high alert right now. Earlier this week, members of community group Haddonfield Safe went before borough administration asking for more security after a rash of home break in. Haddonfield Safe. That's the one we did. I think that's the one we did. But remember, Ock, and they were trying to. <laughs> yep. You're right. You're right. Yeah. Yeah, so this is an update. They, they the, the problem yeah. still persists. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good neighborhood, though. I know that. Oh, look at this. You know this is a good look at look at look at this neighborhood. This is these people are invested in their communities, man. Yeah, this this is the update. Yeah, these these are not. This is this is, these are people that if it wasn't for sons, man, they'd be like working on. They think about. What they would be, they're they're having to deal with this. They're having to put like normal glider business aside. They would probably like be like building like a museum or you know uh, zoning for like a 
a new school or, you know what I'm saying, or doing something or, you know, doing some real business here. But they have, they have to put all that on the back burner now to deal with the crisis at hand. Administration asking for more security after a rash of home break-ins in recent months. Some homes burglarized while occupied. One family had their car stolen, and now this. And this speaks to our greater uh, mission here is to make this town safer. Yosef's store was back open Friday with a boarded up window. She echoed similar calls from that borough council meeting earlier in the week. You have to protect your the business owners. You have to protect the residents. I mean, this is, should not be happening. Yeah, and the owner tells me she's been in business here since 2017 and she loves Haddonfield, but she really doesn't want to go through this a third time or certainly no more than that. I did ask police if this investigation might be connected to any other similar crimes in the region. They would not answer that, only saying that their investigation is, quote, very active. Live in Haddonfield, Leland Pinder, Channel 6 Action News. Gray? Monday night and the big story in Action News is developing. Chopper 6 over the scene of a deadly shooting in Kensington, where police say the suspects were on dirt bikes. Philadelphia police say the 55-year-old man was shot while sitting with eight other people on the corner of Potter and Huntington Streets at around 8 o'clock this evening. Surveillance video shows three dirt bikes pull up with two people on each one. The six suspects then fired more than 40 shots, hitting the victim in the neck, chest, and leg. No one else was injured. Authorities say the suspects then took off on the dirt bus. But the big story on Action News tonight is the search for two suspects. Police say were behind a brutal attack on the North Wildwood this past weekend, as we are now hearing from the father of the victim. These are photos of the two young men. Investigators say punched and kicked a 22-year-old man as he walked with. So that's a glider. Gliders of this. Tonight. Tonight, the man yeah, this is, this is a glider right here. That's, that's a glider. He's down with the brown. As man. he walked with his girlfriend Saturday night. Tonight, like the man's father says the suspects then attacked him after he arrived and tried to defend his son. New Jersey correspondent Trish Harpin live there in North Wildwood tonight. Uh, Trish, you spoke with the father today. This was an awful deal. So because it's, it's, it's one, one is white and one is black, they can kind of like, this is a story that can kind of make big, you know what I'm saying, Paul? It's like, see, look, everyone's doing it. Yeah, crime is equal. That's right. He said his 22-year-old son suffered a concussion and bruises during all this. Now, police are investigating, and they want the public's help in identifying those two suspects. Take a close look at these surveillance images released by North Wildwood Police. They're hoping to identify these two suspects in connection with an aggravated assault on the boardwalk Saturday evening. Like any father, I did, all I did was just wanted to protect my son, and... But when that guy kicked him in the face, that was that just that was it. Kenneth Golombuski says it was the last night of his family's trip to North Wildwood when his 22 year old son was assaulted on the boardwalk. The kid was all in his face and I just ran over there and I pushed this kid out of the way. There was, and I said, you know, um, I'm being pushed and shoved around. Police say the assault happened at 26th Avenue on the boardwalk, but haven't released details about the circumstances. Golombuski says his son and his son's girlfriend were in a nearby arcade when a group approached. He says a comment was made to his girlfriend and a verbal altercation turned physical. His son ended up on the ground. And he kicks Lucas dead in the face. I'm like, oh my God. So I went to try to chase this kid. I thought, no, let me stay here with Lucas. And these bystanders were chasing him. One of the workers at the arcade heard the scuffle and came outside. He was you telling me they don't have no kid, picture of that black kid's face and he's standing right next to the white kid and everyone, but they can't show us a good picture of the black kid's face? <laughs> what are the odds of that? Also, why do like the sons always have to make a comment about someone else's girlfriend? Yeah, I mean, they know who to do that to, though. They definitely know who to do that to. Like, they'll man, do that to you if you, they, they think they can get away with you. Man, my cousin got his ass fuck, bro. He got beat the fuck up trying to talk to a son man uh, chick while he was with her. Yeah. You, definitely, you get killed over that easy. Like, there's no problem.
They were chasing him. One of the workers at the arcade heard the scuffle and came outside. He was on the concrete for a while. They picked him up and he fell back down like two, three times, and they finally got him over to the bench and laid him down. His family says he was taken to the hospital and suffered a concussion. Several shore towns dealt with unruly crowds of teenagers over Memorial Day weekend. Folks who saw the aftermath of this incident say they were surprised to see something like that happen when it was still light around 7.30 p.m. That's the hour, like I said, his families that are up on the boardwalk, and uh, for something like, like that to happen uh, that early, it really surprised us. Now, we're told the young man went to the hospital is home resting now. Anyone with any information is asked to contact North Wildwood detectives. We're live. Mm. And on that note, man, great show, guys. Hit the like button on the way out if you have it. Same black time, same black channel. Um, <clears throat> peace out.